Good afternoon. I want to touch base about something that's come up in the practice over the last couple of weeks and actually came up today and it's, so it's on my mind and that is what is dual sovereignty and how does that impact the charge of crime under both state and federal law. And many of you have grown up, many of us grew up here in the United States of America, we're bombarded with and inundated with the law culture shows like Matlock, movies along that same genre, where we learn about the issues of dual sovereignty, dual, uh, dual jeopardy, state constitutional authority to prosecute crime and federal constitutional authority to prosecute crime. However, those concepts are a little fuzzy. They're, it's difficult to understand. And that's what had come up in, in, a, in a case of mine. And I wanted to just spend a few minutes touching base about it to see if I can bring some clarification to this so we all know that there is a state district court, usually in the county which you live in. It might be an old historic beautiful, beautiful building. It might be a not particularly attractive old building. And it is in that district or county court at law that crimes against the peace and dignity, and that's how they're phrased, crimes against the peace and dignity of the state of Texas are dealt with. And that is where justice and that is where justice is administered in the state or county where that crime occurred. And simple example, simple example, misdemeanors that rise above the level of traffic tickets or other offenses are dealt with in that state or district, that state county or state district court in that county. So.